Vitek. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer at uh, Red Hat. And I'd like to introduce you to the USB Guard project. And I want to actually start with a story of how I got interested so much that I came to the school. And this is probably the oldest uh, reference to a, uh, a USB based uh, attack uh, on, a, on a company. It's not a black hat attack, uh, it's actually, uh, it was, uh, it was actually uh, ordered by a customer from a penetration testing company. Uh, and they have uh, told them to not to use social media or emails or some of the usual attack vectors uh, in the company. So they have to think about something else. And they actually uh, did something which appeared. Uh, Years later, they are calling uh, bad USB, but they did it in um, like a creative way by uh, uh, modifying the hardware. Uh, they took apart a mouse, USB mouse, uh, put inside a USB hub, and they used some drive and connected it to the wire the mouse was using to, to communicate with the computer. So, and they then wrapped it in, inside a nice box and uh, gave it to somebody. Uh, in the company as a, as a gift. So, I naturally uh, would uh, think that uh, such a device would uh, do something to a computer. So, they connected it uh, and uh, using the usual outer and uh, vector, uh, the system actually runs some malware from, from the device. So, you connected a mouse inside your computer and it suddenly uh, connects to some hard drive to your system and that sort of you know, That's uh, pretty unusual. Right? So, uh, as I said, uh, this uh, is like a primitive way of doing the bad USB attack, which uh, was presented in uh, 2014. Uh, so let's uh, show some uh, 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 to the usual attack because which are very really uh, So, uh, before we get to actually to uh, explain what the USB is, uh, most, uh, the most used attack vector is, as I said, uh, the outer and some outer feature of the Playpix itself, and just connecting uh, a, a password device to the to computer and relying on the user or on the outer and feature to run the malware. Uh, the solution to this is to, of course, to disable Outrun, which is Outrun is a strict use feature. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and to educate users and not to run uh, software from random devices. Uh, so, what can you do uh, as an attacker if uh, somebody uh, educates the users and uh, disables Outrun? You can uh, uh, emulate Outrun using uh, the USB protocol itself, you can be the uh, like the device can be the user himself, like uh, typing uh, commands and moving the mouse uh, on the computer, but uh, automatically from the device. So that's uh, 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 what I call rogue uh, USB devices. Uh, that are like devices that uh, like. USB thumb drives or something that you wouldn't expect that uh, uh, you know, uh, execute some uh, m mouse movements or keystrokes on a computer. Uh, but uh, the USB protocol actually allows that. It allows that uh, one device can act as uh, uh, multiple devices at once. And uh, actually, these uh, uh, devices are you can buy you can buy them from eBay for twenty dollars. They call it the Tinsy USB drive by, and uh, there are other. <laughs> Small devices. Um, so, uh, another attack vector is the reprogramming of USB devices. Uh, uh, that's what, what we call bad USB today. Uh, that's uh, like, a, uh, as I explained, the uh, modify, modifying the uh, USB mouse by hardware means. This is like modifying in the same way, but by software means. Uh, it, it requires uh, knowing the protocol and how the manufacturer uh, uses uh, to send firmware to the device. So we have to re reverse engineer and it's a bit harder. 
what it was done by the guys who present, uh, who uh, created the bad USB attack uh, on some uh, 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 commonly used uh, chipsets. drivers itself. So uh, usually um, or in Linux, in the Linux kernel, there is uh, nothing that uh, prevents to uh, uh, connect uh, a, uh, any, any USB device and have the drivers of the USB device loaded automatically. You can, you can blacklist them, but you have to do it manually and you have to know it beforehand. So what, uh, like what, what do you do? what you don't want to load and if somebody uh, creates a new driver then it's it's totally and you have to edit the blacklist. And uh, there is actually a CV uh, quite serious one uh, from 2013 where there was a uh, heat based uh, Marshall outflow farm in a USB device driver. And uh, it was I think found by the fuzzing of the USB drivers. And uh, as I heard that uh, there are some uh, non-public ones in the queue. So, uh, if you want to somehow solve it uh, in your company or on your desktop com computer, you can use uh, uh, one of uh, two uh, uh, things. You can either uh, uh, completely disable your uh, USB ports, either by uh, BIOS means or uh, by ripping out the, the connectors or gluing the devices inside the connectors, or you can use actually a USB guard. So this is a uh, like one minute uh, how to uh, set up your uh, how to set up set up USB guard in your system. Uh, if you are using Federal, then, uh, you can just uh, paste these commands. Uh, if you are using Ubuntu or something else, then you have to replace the first command to install actually the packages or compile them. They are not available on your solution. Uh, using the second line, you can uh, generate uh, a policy for your devices uh, that are uh, connected to, to your system at the moment the command is executed. So it creates a whitelist for, for the connected devices and nothing else will be allowed to connect to your system. If some, some uh, uh, other device that is not known that the policy or to USB guard is connected and if you run the applet then you get a notification okay there is a new device it has these interfaces would you want to allow it or not or will you do want to reject it so if you allow it then what happens is that uh, it will allow uh, the, the kernel to continue with enumeration of the interfaces on the new device and load the uh, interface drivers. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will just block block the device node and not touch any any code uh, whatsoever in any uh, USB driver, uh, but the USB core driver. So it's the only only uh, driver exposed uh, to the USB device. Uh, you can also reject the device. That means uh, that it will be uh, like uh, the device node will be also. Uh, removed from, from the system, like uh, the kernel won't know about it anymore. You have to like uh, uh, disconnect the device and connect it again. So uh, this is the high level overview of USB guard. It's a typical Unix daemon uh, which is uh, running all the time and listening for and you get uh, notifications about new new connected devices and about uh, the changes on the devices. And it relies also on the second feature of the Linux kernel, and that's the Linux uh, USB device authorization feature. Uh, it's a, a Boolean flag for allowing the the like the continuation of uh, uh, the um, USB interface driver lo loading. So. Uh, it's uh, thanks to these two features uh, of, the, of the kernel, uh, the USB card can work as it as it does. <coughs> also, there are optionally uh, the CLI and UA parts 
uh, which you don't have to run, but uh, it's much easier than to interact with the demon. You have to edit the files by yourself and generate the policies and write them. So, there are some uh, of the uh, advanced and planned features. Uh, the basic uh, functioning of USB guard is uh, just blacklisting and whitelisting uh, on, uh, on matching the uh, device attributes that, uh, that the device uh, exports to the system. Uh, that, that is uh, the, the list of the requested interfaces that, uh, for the, to interact with the system, uh, and some serial numbers, supported protocols, uh, and, and uh, like basic stuff that the USB specification uh, uh, tells the devices to, to, to export. Uh, but you can use actually uh, the, the one of these uh, advanced features to, to make like uh, more complex policies or more more intelligent policies. Uh, one of them is uh, the room conditions. Uh, you can match like the, uh, the actual uh, the current conditions of the system, like uh, the context of the connected devices. So you can write a, a rule uh, which uh, uh, like allows a device only if another device is connected or not. Uh, so it uh, allows you to like uh, check uh, what the time of local time of the system, so you can allow a device uh, if it's working hours or not. And some other basic uh, conditions are implemented. But uh, the list of the conditions uh, is currently expanding, uh, so I, and I'm looking for use cases to implement uh, the uh, Currently, I'm working on USB I/O monitoring. Uh, that's I/O monitoring like in uh, uh, input and output data and bandwidth. So you can, uh, uh, like, you, after it's implemented, you can say, uh, "Okay, I have this thumb drive, and I don't want that people." Upload the data uh, to the sound drive. They can read from that, but they can uh, they cannot uh, upload any data or only small amount of data which are required for communicating with the device. Uh, that's uh, good for uh, the data exfiltration use case. You, you don't want to like uh, if people uh, uh, exfiltrate data from your company on your USB device, but you 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 want to you know, let them use. Uh, fund drives to actually distribute some data in the company or on the servers. Uh, another uh, plan feature is uh, device signing. That's actually the original idea of the for the implementation of the USB kernel authorization uh, feature. Uh, but the guy who implemented it, uh, he didn't actually continue uh, to anyway. Uh, to, to like actually implement the, the, the device signing. Um, another uh, thing I, I like to like, improve is the UI of the, the applet. As you can see, uh, it's like uh, not really useful uh, to see some numbers here, which represent the uh, interfaces that the, the device uh, wants to uh, communicate with. Um, so uh, ideally, you want to translate uh, these uh, numbers into some human readable strengths to, to know uh, what, what the device, uh, what the interface number represents, it, whether it's a keyboard or mouse or, or a network card, <laughs> such a thing. And uh, of course, there are limitations to, to this solution because uh, the USB, uh, any USB device can be faked uh, and cloned. So if somebody, if you create a policy that allows a USB keyboard to be connected to your system, then somebody can just uh, take the keyboard, clone it, and he can then reprogram the firmware uh, to, to like insert some uh, open keystrokes or something. So all he needs to pass the policy is uh, actually to have the metadata of the uh, of the device, uh, like the serial number, the vendor ID, the product ID, and you can uh, actually, you don't have to, with some devices, you don't have to uh, steal them, you just, it, it's just enough to look at them, and then uh, look up the information on, on the, on the uh, manufacturer page. Uh, 
So, uh, because usually the uh, the USB devices uh, do not export uh, serial numbers, like thumb drives usually do, but USB keyboards they are just empty or they are same for all all the uh, all the products of the company. They're just like one, two, three, four, just some uh, value. Uh, so it's uh, it's quite uh, hard to actually uh, distinguish two pieces of the same product from each other from the point of view USB gap or from the point of uh, the current. Another problem is uh, when those uh, The interface types have a hierarchy, a standard hierarchy, uh, and some vendors do not like, uh, do not follow this hierarchy. They, they use a special value that uh, says, okay, this is a vendor specific type or the vendor specific driver, and you don't know what's in it. If you if you have like a bunch of these devices, then it's uh, it's not a good idea to actually uh, use them in your policies and allow them because uh, like somebody can exploit the the fact that uh, it allows uh, this vendor specific thing and you can uh, create a own device and attack your system using uh, something else. USB keyboards are especially um, problematic because, as I said, they don't export the serial number, so you cannot distinguish them uh, from each other. Yeah, I, have, I think I have some time, so I will show you some example policies. Uh, I didn't want to show, that, show them uh, before because uh, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, it looks scary. Uh, to, to have some a bunch of lines uh, in a strange language, uh, but actually it's uh, quite easy if you like it. if you are just a uh, uh, regular uh, notebook user and you all you want to to use is uh, are USB phone drives, then you can write this one line in the in the policy and it will allow only phone drives and nothing else. So if uh, somebody inside says thumb drive with a keyboard inside, then it won't be allowed because uh, the system sees that there are two interfaces on the system on the on the device, and this uh, rule only allows uh, only one interface to be on. on a um, yeah, some other examples you can play Russian roulette uh, with USB devices. It's a special condition that. Uh, on each evaluation returns uh, like a random true or false with uh, the specified probability. So you insert your device and it's rejected uh, with uh, high probability. And this is a CLI usage uh, example. You can, from the command line, you can list the devices, uh, list the rules, or append new rules. So it's quite easy to interact with the demon that way. Thank you, Daniel. Um, okay. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. I want to put a question first. Uh, does this work on servers as well? Yes, it does. Not to run the demo so that um, USB guard is blocking the device, is there theoretically any room for malicious code to be run, blow it out, or like, uh, sort of blow the driver? Um, assuming it's blocked, then it doesn't driver that's interacting uh, with the device is actually the USB core driver. And if there is an exploit, then yeah, it will not so much as well. But I think it's so much exposed, uh, the driver is so much exposed with this, you know, project like a fast and quite a bit of 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 a
Especially keyboards and lots of things, since you don't uh, want to understand the serial number of files. I think playing with the TNC, uh, um, you do have something like a uh, ratio. By default, I mean, it's quite easy. Uh, it enumerates a couple of devices, right? So, would it be possible to go to see uh, uh, multiple devices are connected to a server? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's actually the main. In this case, if the TNC device would be connected, then like there would be three lines, each representing a different interface. Uh, like uh, this is a keyboard. And the key next as a keyboard. So this represents a different interface to the system. The mouse would be some number. Yeah. So maybe it would be an idea to show the currently accepted uh, devices in this Maybe if you have a double uh, already accepted the UBI key out of it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. If, if you accept the UBI key as it is, as you see, then if somebody connects to another UBI key which is to another device, or to be connected to one to another, it's a completely different device from the point of view of the UBI key. But I mean, from the user's perspective, I just think, oh, this is a Yeah, so that's, that's why I you why to explain what it is and more than the Solving the problem on a technical level, but having the proper policies, as yeah. this is a very well difficult thing to achieve uh, or to, to make work well. Yeah. So I'm very happy to meet you, and I really think we should talk. Right. And um, what I actually wanted to ask is, uh, do you know the status of uh, the of Linux's uh, capability of blocking interfaces or allowing interfaces only, rather than devices? Uh, at this moment, there is uh, uh, the granularity is only on the device level. Right. You cannot uh, like. If you, uh, if there would be more interfaces, you can add L1 and block the other. But uh, I guess uh, it's uh, because of the way the, the drivers are implemented. You can only have like the generic USB core driver, which creates the generic U device node uh, with the metadata that the USB protocol needs. But once, once you get uh, down uh, or up the, the level, then. Uh, you, you, you would have to modify a lot of the drivers to, to insert the flag in there. We have time for one final question up here. Well, the problem is the, the USB keyboard and mouse are blocked. I can't click those buttons. So we're going to need a suggestion of some way of entering a password using the device before you using the keyboard yes. before you actually yes. 
we connect to the main X server. And that suggests a solution for USB keyboards. Focus keyboards don't have the user's password. Yeah. So, so that means integrating to the X server. Uh, the, the question is like how you can uh, click on or on something uh, or write something if you don't have the device at all, uh, if you don't have a keyboard at all. And that's why, that's one of the reasons I implemented the room conditions. You can uh, have like all of the keyboards keyboard to be connected, but then the condition like uh, uh, tells you that, or tells the USB assistant not to connect any other keyboard. Okay. So nobody report or, or no matter what, uh, no other keyboard. If one is already allowed, then you can like uh, that's like implementable on the on the policy level. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel.